In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On today, February 1st, we offer this Mass for a thanksgiving of Julius da Silva, for the healing of Marina de Carlo, Gabriel Cumiento, Edith Gamboa, Adan Nandiequi, Robert Tardicilla, Catherine Thompson, and for the intentions of Benny Garces, Evelyn Cruz, Ramona, Catherine Thompson and family, Brenda Guerrero and family, all volunteers in the parish, and for the souls of Rogelio Flores, John, and all souls in purgatory. We pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Concerning the great power of faith, what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you, and accomplished for those who take refuge in you, in the sight of everyone. Let your hearts heart take, take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Let your Let hearts, your hearts take, take comfort, comfort all who hope in the Lord. Lord. 
Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to, uh, to me when I was beset as a city under siege. Let your, Let your hearts, hearts take comfort, comfort all who hope in the Lord. Lord. I had said in my alarm, I'm driven far from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Let your heart take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Let your heart take comfort, comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs. And no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain, for he had often been restrained with shackles and chains. But the chains he wrenched apart and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the water. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. We come to a rather famous chapter in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11. It recites a litany of the accomplishments of the ancient heroes, Gideon, Barak, Samson. The letter tells us that they did not receive what they were promised until Christ came. If they had been able to achieve so much in their life, we are asked the question, what greater things should we be able to accomplish now that we know Jesus Christ, now 
that we recognize the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. The point the letter is trying to make is that we have a greater availability of religious resources than did the generation before us. The question is, are we using those resources? In the gospel, upon releasing the man from the demons, Jesus sends him back to his family. This demonstrates a way that faith can be strengthened by sharing with others our experience of how God is working in our lives. This is something, and I've mentioned this to you before, that Catholics are not in the habit of doing, generally speaking. This challenges us, both the letter to the Hebrews and the gospel challenges us. Why are our stories of faith private? Why do we keep our faith secret? There are many reasons that Catholics have not been taught that evangelization is essential. Today, we need this more than ever. We live in a very liberal, left-wing country. President Joe Biden has just been elected president of the United States. Notwithstanding that he calls himself a Catholic, his policies do not demonstrate Catholic teaching. So therefore, we label him hypocrite. We need to, in a deep way, as disciples of Jesus Christ, speak out about who God is, how God is working in our lives, and in a deep way, especially during COVID, the comfort that this brings us. We are not to keep our faith private. I try to get this across to people in baptism classes, wedding classes. I try to explain to people, if you really say that you love the Lord, if you really, in fact, love the Lord, then you would speak to people about the Lord. Because if you do not, either you do not love the Lord, or you do not love people enough to let them know about the Lord. And both are a sin. We need not to be selfish in our spiritual existence. We need to make sure that our faith is something that we become comfortable speaking about. I was in a Zoom meeting with the catechists yesterday, Vlad and the catechists, as they're getting trained on Zoom, as they're being trained on what is important in evangelizing the children they'll be teaching, specifically the First Communion Confirmation classes, grade twos, grade sevens, generally speaking. And it is incredibly important to get them to become comfortable in evangelizing, comfortable in proclaiming the good news in speaking about Jesus Christ, explaining why they are disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with very young children, it's because my mommy told me so. Parents baptize their babies without any consent, obviously, from the child. As we progress in our faith, and other influences come into our child's life, we need, as a church and as a family, to make sure that the child has the resources necessary to answer questions, 
we need to make sure that the child has resources to be able to respond, that the child becomes spiritually articulate. Unfortunately, in the past, our Catholic formation has not done this. So you end up, and I know because I've met many of them in my priesthood, you meet people with doctorate degrees who have maybe a grade five ability to communicate their faith. When you meet people like this, it's very sad because there is so much potential in them. And yet, they have not been given the resources, they have not been challenged to evangelize, to speak out about their faith in a way that sounds intelligent, articulate, logical, reasonable. We have failed as a church in doing this. And it is always sad when I meet these incredibly bright people that in the secular world are so successful, and yet we have failed as a church to bring them up to a point where it is equivalent to their education. So what you end up with is an incredibly knowledgeable person with very limited wisdom. An incredibly successful person with very limited awareness of their spiritual life. Other than what they learned in elementary school and maybe a little high school. But beyond that, we did not form them. They have not been formed. And the result is you end up with a person that has enormous potential, but they might as well be the Old Testament characters, not fully aware of God the Holy Spirit in them. And I've already told you how, as a priest, I try to accomplish this through a deeper awareness of Scripture, through a deeper awareness of what the sacraments mean, and through a deeper awareness of God the Holy Spirit. This is how I try to bring people to a different level than they currently are. It is incredibly important that we do this as a church because, as I mentioned, we live in a world where others are being trained to represent the secular philosophy. Others are exposed to the secular philosophy on a regular basis, given the television shows they watch, the movies they watch, the YouTube videos they watch who they are exposed to in the public realm. If we want our people to meet their full potential, then we have to form them in an ongoing basis. We have been lazy as a church. Post grade seven confirmation, most institutions within the Catholic circle the family, the schools, the parish, don't have a plan for continual adult formation. They don't have a plan to form these people beyond confirmation. Oh, they might try this or try that, but there's no clear plan. And the result is that you end up with these people, a lot of them that have incredible potential but do not have the resources within them there is not that deep awareness of their spiritual potential this is what hebrews challenges us to do this is what the gospel challenges us to do and we need in a deep way to put into place and that is my goal as the pastor of this parish, that we put into place adult formation programs. 
that we don't leave people where they are. That is the goal, and ultimately, it's going to take time, but we should begin to see the fruit of adult formation in the parish. We'll be seeing more involvement in mission trips. We'll be seeing more people involved in Bible study. We'll see more people involved in life in the spirit activities within the parish that make people more aware of God the Holy Spirit in them. We'll see more young people that do not fear proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is what brings me joy as a Catholic priest when I see the fruit building, building, building. This is the goal. This is the goal I have in this parish. This is the goal you should have as parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. And ultimately, we need to do this, especially now as a Catholic church, before our young people become secular. And when I've asked people, when typically does this happen? Early high school, late high school, early university. And that's where we need to work at it. And that's where the church has failed because we've tended to ignore those ages, 14 to 20. A equals B, B equals C, therefore C equals A. If their faith weakens, if they don't have the resources necessary from 14 to 20, that's the age we need to focus on. Is it a difficult age to focus on? Sure it is. It's easier before 14, and it's easier after 20. That's why the church doesn't do it, because it's difficult. Those are tough ages. Anybody raising children knows exactly what I mean. Those are tough ages. And people have actually said to me when I challenge them, oh, well, Father, they'll come back eventually. No, they won't. They may have in the past, but they aren't now. They are not. Because in that philosophy, the parish should be full of 25-year-olds and up or 30-year-olds and up, and it is not. So, again, you know, I'm the type of person that tries to face facts and not create some rose-colored glasses philosophy of dreams. This is not a time for dreams. This is a time for planning. And ultimately, that is the commitment I make to you over the next couple of years, that we will have a plan, we will put that plan into action, and I promise you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will see fruit from that plan. But it requires us to focus on an age that most people find uncomfortable focusing on, and that is when we lose them, 14 to 20. God bless you all. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Yes, the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. 
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we now acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom Collins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, Rogelio Flores, John, all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other now the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring you to everlasting life. Just a quick note that if you know someone or you are uh, someone uh, that has a child in either in grade two or grade seven, um, please um, uh, get onto the website www.peterandpaul.church and look up the program uh, that is um, there available for your child's formation. Again, as I said in the homily, uh, the church has always focused on these two ages, uh, grade uh, 2, 7 years old, and grade 7 or grade 8, uh, 12, 13 years old. Um, we need to go beyond that. That is the goal that we have. Is it easy? No. Um, but it is necessary if they're going to meet their full potential as young adults and then as adults. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O God, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. 
To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Thank you for joining us today. Your presence is important, um, not only to those watching, uh, but also to myself, to Mary, uh, to the parish, um, knowing that we've maintained the connection during COVID. Um, this is essential. Uh, please also keep in mind that we have communion services tonight, Saturday night, and, um, oh, sorry, this is Monday Mass, I'm getting confused, uh, that we have services on Saturday and on, um, and on Sunday. Uh, so we have communion services. Um, right now I'm pre-recording the Mass because I have a funeral on Monday and a funeral on Tuesday. Um, uh, so again, uh, please keep in mind that we do have communion services available um, and we offer communion on the weekends. Uh, again, check the website for a schedule. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us.